point to everyone who won't you say, I got it. There was a great famine in the city. The siege lasted so long that a donkey's head sold for 80 shekels of silver and a quarter of a cab of seed pods for five shekels. As the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried to him, Help me, my lord the king. The king replied, If the lord doesn't help you, where can I get help for you? From the threshing floor, from the wine press. You may be seated. I want to preach for a little while today using as a subject, I'm not eating that. Uh, I'm, I'm not eating that as we can, we embark on a new series of economic development uh, called Bank on It. Look at the person beside you, tell them you can bank on it. You can, you can bank on it. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in our history, the federal government is reducing the funding for food stamps, affecting 47 million Americans' diet and appetite. In 2009, the Recovery and Reinvestment Act, commonly known as the Stimulus Package, gave a boost to those trying to get back on their feet at the very least ensured that there was bread on the table. It was the original intention that the increase would stay in place until the inflation rate was ironed out, leaving the adjusted rate from the stimulus package to remain in place until 2015. Legislators raided the proverbial cookie jar in 2010, but never replaced the funds that they took out. So when it was time to reallocate the budget, the funds that had been earmarked to help the destitute and the forgotten had been spent. It's amazing how many have borrowed from you but never paid it back, leaving many seniors at odds trying to figure out whether or not they would buy groceries or buy medication. A senior citizen who lives in one of the most decadent and opulent nations in the world has now been put in a place where they used to receive $91 a month in food stamps and now as of Friday, just receiving $80. In the aggregate, what does that mean? It means that a senior citizen in the United States of America on food stamps, hear me very clearly, only has in a 30-day month period, only has to spend 88 cents a meal. You can't buy a can of tuna for 88 cents. And that wise for the younger generation, you can't even order from McDonald's $1 menu, leaving your best viable option being a packet of ramen noodles. This is having a profound effect on one out of 11 Americans. It's not a black issue, it's not a white issue, a Latino or Hispanic issue. It is an issue that America has declared war on the poor. Your income affects what you eat. You have to gauge if in fact you're dealing with the confinements of poverty. You have to gauge how long the groceries will keep and how cheap it is. You can't go to the sprawling heights of suburbia and buy a chicken box and milk, malt liquor in the same store. You cannot buy Chinese food with indiscernible contents in the suburbs. As a consequence, those who grew up on the rough side of the mountain, they can take the mic from my hand and they'll testify that the first of the month is usually the trip to the grocery store. And to avoid multiple trips due to limited transportation and mounting fuel bills, everything for the month was bought at one time. So canned food vegetables are as cheap as gang tattoos. 
And fruit without syrup in the can is without question. If it's not canned, it's frozen. So we're raising a generation of children who are being raised in abject poverty who are on a strict diet of frozen french fries, frozen chicken fingers, frozen TV dinners. And you become so acclimated to a processed di dining menu that mac and cheese that don't come out of a box tastes funny. Because you have, in fact, been reduced to your level of expectation. So conservatives with a meandering smile of hypocrisy and condemnation will drive through the hood and point out multiple cases of obesity. Saying they must be doing well because they're overweight, not realizing that they're out of shape or obese, not because they have too much, but because they have bad quality food. And most of the food has been processed or chemicalized, and you drive through our neighborhoods, and you are in a vast desert where it's hard to come by fresh fruits and vegetables. The average hungry man frozen dinner, ladies and gentlemen, has, if you can handle this, the average frozen dinner has 1,350 calories. Healthy food is expensive. It takes time to prepare. And the bad thing, it doesn't hold long. And so you get to a place where you understand who you are in God is a rare commodity, hear me, that not that many people can digest you. Not a lot of people can handle who you are. Why? Because you are expensive. For who you are today, it took a whole lot of investment just for you to be able to get out the bed in the morning. People don't know the price you paid just for you to have a level of sanity. Not only are you expensive because it took a lot uh, for you to get to this point, but it took a lot for God to prepare you. Uh, there are some things now that you used to be excited about back in the day that now won't even register a decibel point. Why? Because you've been prepared for something greater. People who don't know your testimony, who don't know your story, will falsely presume that you're arrogant or stuck up, but they don't understand I am expectant. I, I expect the best for my life and because I've been down so long I've made up in my mind I'm never going back to that kind of low living so if that makes me separated please forgive me but because I know what that tastes like I don't want to have that experience another day in my life a lot of people take you for granted and they don't understand because of what you've been through and what it took for God to prepare you. You got a short shelf life. I ain't waiting forever for you to realize my value and my greatness. Don't, don't, don't think that I'm hard up, desperate, and thirsty waiting on you to validate me. If you don't appreciate where I am, I'll take my stuff and go somewhere else. I spent too many years being taken for granted and being undermined and folk not realizing my potential. In this season, I'd rather be by myself than be surrounded with people who are in are not grateful for the level of God that rests on my life. Elbow the person beside to tell him I'm healthy. I'm healthy. Hallelujah. The evidence that I'm healthy is anybody in relationship with me gets blessed. God, I, I can't hear nobody in here. If you are in relationship with me, I'm a real ride or die friend. If, if I got it, you got it. If, if I know how to pray, I'm going to pray for you. You are healthy if you stick with me. Oh. Hallelujah. The word of God... The word of God, watch this, the word of God has been called the living bread. It is the living bread, watch this, it has been called the bread of heaven. Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior, was born in a place called Bethlehem, which translates to mean the house of bread. 
in 2 Kings chapter 6, it says that, watch this, there is a famine in the city, which means that there is no bread. I need you to stay with me, not just literally, but metaphorically. Here it is that the people of God are living in a famine, which means there is no bread. I told you the word of God is bread of heaven. Jesus was born, watch this, in Bethlehem, which is the house of bread. Y'all stay with me. I'm trying to show you something real quick. And the people are dying because there is a famine. I'm not talking about Wonder Bread or Roman meal. They're dying, watch this, because they are in an atmosphere of no fresh revelation. They're in an atmosphere that they just keep hearing warned over, outdated prophets that are not relevant to what it is that they're going through. I believe with everything that's in me, you didn't get out your bed and get out of your house and drive 25 minutes to get to a church for stale bread. You want to know, God, is there something fresh that you telling me in November that I didn't hear in October that will sustain me in this season? And so the body of Christ is going through a drought because there is no fresh bread. The word that is going out now is moldy. The texture is processed. Y'all not talking back to me. As a matter of fact, it feels frozen. It's moldy, watch this, because it's hard to hold and hard to digest. And I'm going to ask you a critical question. Who wants frozen bread? You go to a restaurant, you'll ask them when they bring that basket out, did this just come out? If not, I'll wait until the fresh one is ready. I don't know where you are. I'm not even preaching to you. I'm preaching to the person behind you who made up in your mind bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. I, I don't know where you are. Some of you in this room are going through something so dire, so desperate that you need more than he died one Friday and got up one Sunday morning. But I need to know, Rev, what is God getting ready to do for me? It's, it's the end of the year and I've been waiting on some things to happen. And God told me to tell you, it's almost your season. If, if you suffer with me, you go be able to reign with me. Look at your neighbor and say, I need a fresh word from God. What I heard from God in August ain't going to hold me in November. But I need to know how to keep my family together. I, I need to know what I can say to bring my child back into consciousness. I, I need to know how to keep my sanity when life is driving me crazy. Look at your neighbor and say, the choir is good. The dancing is good. The video was nice. But I can't and leave the house of God until I get a word from God. I, I need to know in times like these, Lord, have you forgotten about me? Don't you see me down here struggling and in a fix? And he told me to tell you, I may not come when you want me, but I am an on time God. You can make it fresh bread. Hallelujah. Some, somebody say, preach black man. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can. Be seated, please. So there's a famine in the land. No fresh revelation. No, no fresh word from God. If everything they're getting is stale. And so they respond. They respond to the drought and to the deficit. Watch this. Because being broke affects your taste. Y'all just missed that. I'm, or those of us old school, Big Mama would say, if you hungry, you gonna eat it. I, 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 I can't hear nobody. You ain't being picky if it ain't that many options. You gonna eat whatever it is that they put on that table. Being broke affects your appetite. I'm at verse number 25. Watch what the text says. I'm in 2 Kings chapter 6. Don't take my word for it. Cross-reference it with me. It says the famine lasts so long. Watch this. That the price, I'm in the King James Version, the price of asses' heads go up. 
If you're in the New International Version, what we regularly read from, it'll say a donkey's head. In King James Version, translated 1611, it says an ass's head. As his head, ladies and gentlemen, is a metaphor for man's knowledge. All right, I think I lost you here. So because they can't get a word from God, they are eaten up whatever some man says. God, help me. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of where we are in the body of Christ and you praying to some ultimate being, some power of the universe. Y'all ain't talking back to me. You anointed talking about the law of attraction. I mean, how in the world you team Jesus and team Sagittarius? It has got to be some kind of discernment to say, not by might, but by his spirit. They begin to devour, watch this, man's opinion. Hallelujah. You got to be so careful when you get so caught up in the personality of a preacher. God, y'all don't like me here. How did you really miss the point of Pentecost? If at the end of the day you walk out of this room and say, Jamal Bryan can sure preach, then I did not do my job. When I stand behind this desk, I must decrease. And the Spirit of God ought to increase. When you go through what you're dealing with, you don't want to know what I learned at Morehouse, Duke, or Oxford. But you want to know, did God scoop down from heaven and speak into my man of God's life for what I need? You ought not come to church looking to be impressed by words and theology and doctrine. But is there a fresh word from God? I ain't here for no Jamal. I'm here for Jesus and and if Jesus is the reason <laughs> Hallelujah Hallelujah Can't get so caught up In the opinion of man That you make man's opinion Your menu Hallelujah we got to get past preachers' opinions and philosophical musings and new age doctrine and astrology and denominational traditions and understand, does it line up with the will of God? Y'all ain't talking back to me. That's why many times I'm not on the right side of what is politically correct. I got to go with what God says. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Governor O'Malley don't sign my check. I don't work for the mayor. I can't hear nobody in here. I don't work work for no congressman or no senator but I work for a man named Jesus God help me in here I ain't got to be on your program you ain't got to invite me to pray at city hall but if you get back in a corner you better find a real man of God that will remind the nation if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways I'll hear from heaven Hallelujah. Ha. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. Hallelujah. You, you can't get caught up in man's opinion. I want to talk to 50 y'all in the room. You know it is from God when it stretches you out of convenience. God help me in here you know it's from God when it don't make logical sense when it's not reasonable when it's not rational I know it must be from God you ain't never heard of no church walking outside of a jail over a thousand people in 40 degree weather and lifting up the name of Jesus but, but when God comes he gives strange direction look at your neighbor say I never thought I would do some of the things I've done since I've been in this church but God God has stretched me in a way that I know if it were not for God, folk would look at me like I'm crazy. Look at your neighbor say, God gives me wisdom. He gives me wisdom that don't match my background, my degree, my training, my pedigree, or even my education. But when I stand, I speak with authority because God will touch my mind and give me insight about stuff that don't even make sense. Look at your neighbor say, I don't have a PhD, but I'm a good therapist because I done talk myself out of going crazy. There were moments the enemy tried to kill me, but I had to get my mind back on straight and declare I woke up this morning with my mind straight. 
laid on Jesus. Be seated, please. The text says it gets so bad. Not only are they eating a donkey or ass's head. Watch what the text says. The text says they are also eating dove's dung. All right, I better slow walk here. Uh, they're eating dove's dung. Watch this. And uh, the price of it is going up. All right. Uh, you should know by now uh, that the Holy Spirit metaphorically is symbolized through a dove. Uh, you remember when Noah came through that storm uh, that God sent him a symbol to let him know the storm you just came out of. You ain't ever going to have to go through that again. I better stop right there because some of y'all just missed that. Would you look at your neighbor and say you just completed the worst season of your life. Hallelujah. If you were going to drown, it would have happened 30 days ago. But because God gave you a life preserver jacket, every time you thought you were going to go down, God gave you buoyancy to be able to bounce back up. You will not go out in this season. The Holy Spirit uh, is uh, uh, metaphorically represented as a dove. When Noah comes out of the ark, he sees the rainbow. The dove comes with an olive branch to let him know dry ground is near. You cross-pollinate, go into the New Testament. You remember when Jesus gets baptized and Jesus, the Father turns on the, uh, the, turns on the audio-visual uh, department in heaven and makes the booming announcement, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And after Jesus emerges from the water, a dove is released. It is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Stay with me here. In 2 Kings chapter 6, what says the, 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 the they are so destitute and in such dire predicament that they're eating ass's head and dove's dung. All right, they are not eating the dove itself. They are eating the dung, the residue, the excrement. Uh, watch this, that the dove has released. All right, if you were to go outside after church is released and you find bird droppings on your windshield, it is a sign, watch this, that while you were gone, a bird was there. Mm -hmm. The bird was there, but somewhere he left. So watch what the church is doing. Y'all are missing this. The church has become so desperate in the middle of this famine that they're eating a preacher's opinion and they're eating the excrement. Watch this, that the Holy Spirit left. So their diet is not based off of what the Holy Spirit is doing. It is based off of what he has already done. I think I missed somebody in here. I don't want to just shout in church over our Old Testament. Based off of what he did in 86, 93, 2005. But when you see me give God glory, it is not because I'm eating the stuff the Holy Spirit did before. But I need eight of you who believe even right now the Holy Spirit is flying over this place. If you don't believe in a fresh touch, don't shout with me. But if you believe God getting ready to anoint you again, he's getting ready to touch you again. I need you to give Give God glory like you want a fresh revelation. Ha. I can't hear nobody lift. If you don't care whether the Holy Spirit stops by, you ain't got to say anything. But, but if you need God to do something. Ha. Be seated. My time is almost up. Um. Whoever you're seated beside today. Would you, lean, would you lean over to him and tell him, I can't eat off the past. Look him in the eye and tell him, I'm feasting off the future. Hallelujah. You just missed what I just said. Look at the person on the other side of you and tell him, I cannot eat off of the past. I'm getting ready to feast off of the future. Pastor, I'm lost. What are you saying to me? When you see me give God a shout this time, it is not for what he's already done. But I'm giving God glory for what he's about to do. And I, I, God, I can't hear nobody. Would you shout in this 
discount for what you believe is happening in your future? Would you give God glory for what you think is going to happen? Be seated, please. 2,000 years ago, on a cross far away, there was a man named Jesus. Hallelujah. Help me to preach it right. And, and uh, they hung him high. And, hallelujah. They, they, they stretched him wide. And uh, they, they were trying to make him hurry up and die. God help me adhere. So uh, one, one of these soldiers who, who thought because he was black and from the hood thought that he did not have discerning, discriminating tastes. He, he, he got a spear and put a sponge on the end of it and dipped it in vinegar. God help me adhere. And put it up to Jesus' mouth. Now a new living translation will tell you. Here it is. It was not called gall. It was called malt. Mm -hmm. All right, let me see if I can help somebody here. They thought because he was black, poor, and in pain, hallelujah, that what he was going through, they could just feed him malt liquor. God help me. But Jesus said, I ain't that kind of dude. If I'm going to go through it, let me feel the pain so that when I come out of it, I'll appreciate the process. And I need some real people with all the pressure you under. You should be high right now. Now, you should be drunk right now. You should be out of your mind. Y'all ain't talking back to me. But if you woke up sober, even with all the pressure that you're under, would you give God glory that you can handle the pain because it's a part of the process? Be seated, please. Um, my time is almost up. You can't avoid it if you get ready to be delivered from it. I said you can't avoid it if, um, if you get ready to be delivered from it. Some, sometimes God uh, will let you taste disappointment. Uh, uh, he'll, he'll let you taste frustration and let you taste loneliness. So that when you come out of it, you, God, I wish I had some church people in the room. You, you won't forget what that tastes like. Hallelujah. You got to tell the enemy you meant it for evil. But God is getting ready to work it out for my good. Look at the person beside you. Tell him you couldn't even order from my menu. If you know the stuff God had to force feed me into dealing with. There's some stuff then that I didn't want. But I thank God for it now. Because had I not gone through that, I wouldn't have the person that I am today. But God made me eat some stuff. You'd be amazed uh, how many people in this room in this season have had to have humble pie a la mode. Uh, you, God help me. You don't even like asking people for help. I need some real people. They, 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 they don't even know that there were some days you had to hold back the tears. And God help me. You ain't never had to struggle like this. You ain't never been frustrated like this. Uh, but you're able to declare even over yourself. Weeping may endure for a night. But God, if you help me to wake up another morning, I believe something is getting ready to shift. You see that, please. Um, um, uh, I, uh, the king is passing by. And this mother, uh, who been affected by the food stamp reduction, Start screaming out because she's in the purview of the king. King, help me. And, uh, and the king stops where he is. 
And he says something that I hope you, you can handle uh, and digest today. He says, verse number 28, uh, he says, verse 26, he says, if the Lord don't help you, how you think you going to get out of this? God, I say, I... You, you don't even understand that every now and again, God strategically cuts off every other source. God, I can't. You done called family. They struggling as bad as you are. You done called friends and they ain't got two wooden nickels to rub together. God says, I had to cut everything off because I miss hearing you. God, help me. And I know sometimes the only way I can get your attention is I got to cut some stuff off. And I, I miss the sound of your voice. It does something to me when you can worship me when you're not sure where the next meal is coming from. See, some of y'all can only shout for excess and overflow and harvest. But there's a small group in this room that says, God, you ain't got to make me a millionaire. Just give me a meal. God, I can't hear nobody in here. I, I, I don't need no Maybach. I don't need a Bentley. Just give me a working car where the red light ain't on, where the engine ain't messed up, where the transmission won't fail, where the tires got air in it. I'm not asking God for extra. Be seated, please. I, um, I wrestled with God. I, I fought with him uh, about this message because I uh, said, God, this, this, um, this don't line up with uh, what you told me to preach this month on wealth development and wealth creation uh, and the spirit of entrepreneurship. This, uh, this, this ain't no tithing message. It ain't... Uh, <laughs> This ain't no 30, 60, 100 fold uh, blessing. He said, uh, he said, Jamal, um, so many times uh, the body of Christ has taken my grace for granted. That they asking me for fur coats and diamond rings and Birkin bags that, um, that they forget that I'm God of necessities. Would you remind them for me, Jamal? Remind them for me. He will supply. God, and now my church is coming in. All of my needs. Y'all don't have any needs in the room. This is going to be a crazy shout. It's going to be almost offensive to your level of intellect. But here's what God told me to say to you. He said, Jamal, tell 730. Tell 730. Please tell 730 to cry out unto me like they expect me every day. Watch this. To feed their family. Now, I, I know that ain't extra. I, I know that ain't a whole lot. But I, God, I can't hear anybody. I, I dare those of you that want to believe by faith, my children will never be hungry. My grandchildren will never be in life. But Lord, every day, put food on the table. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm getting ready to go. I'm, I'm getting ready to go. He, he gave me instructions. He says, I want to see what is the level of their faith that they'll believe by power. Watch this. That even while the government has made cutbacks, heaven is getting ready to make a setup. God, y'all just missed that in here. And I'm believing by faith. I don't know whether y'all can handle it. One out of seven Marylanders don't know where their next meal is coming from. But I want to see whether there's a mature body in this house. I want you to declare, watch this, when you give God glory, that not a member of this ministry, not a member of this community is going to go hungry. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Huh? See, if I were talking about millions of dollars and checks in the mail, y'all would be running through the church. But I, I need to see some believers that can testify. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed. Begging for bread. Would you lift up your voice like nobody on your roll will ever have to worry about where that next meal is coming from? Ha. Hallelujah. If you lift up your voice, 
nobody standing around you will ever be in a soup kitchen line. If, if you lift up your voice, no child will go to bed hungry. If, if you lift up your voice, Hallelujah. 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 God is getting ready to do his perfect will. Hallelujah. I need you to lift up your hand. Hallelujah. I don't know where you are. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name. I don't know whether you're struggling. I don't know if you got your back up against the wall. That when you open the refrigerator, you can see your own reflection. But I need some God-like worshipers. If you lift up that hand, watch this. God says, if you give me glory, let me see your level of faith. Any person under covenant with this ministry, I'm getting them off food stamps by the end of the year. I don't want them depending on nobody but me. I, I am their source. Hallelujah. If you have that kind of faith, how much you to lift up that hand and open up your mouth and cry 